In 1990, God changed my life. And when he did, he called me to become a preacher for him. And over those years, I've been an assistant pastor and a youth pastor, a senior pastor of a church. And now I'm an evangelist as I sit here sharing with you. And over those years, I've ministered to lots of people in all different kinds of settings. And a lot of the situations I've been in is talking with a husband or a wife or a couple together about troubles in their marriage and their family. Too many times over the years, I've talked with couples about the difficulties that they're going through in their marriage and sometimes heading to divorce. They might be in the midst of on their path to divorce. They might be going through divorce proceedings. They, it might be after divorce, trying to pick up the pieces. It might be dealing with the fallout of a rebellious teenager uh, who's being bounced back and forth between two homes after mom and dad got split up. If you are in a troubled marriage right now, heading on the path to divorce, or you know who someone is, I am talking to you. And I don't have a lot of great advice to give you in and of myself. Everything I share with you today is because of the encounter I had with God through His Son, Jesus Christ, many years ago. One of the first things I want to say to you is that, unfortunately, you're not alone. There are millions and millions of people that are battling with troubled marriages and wrestling with whole, this whole divorce dilemma right now with you today. And I just want to give you the broader picture of where we're at as a country. Uh, so you can see the broader picture of where you fit in dealing with troubled marriages and divorce. And it all goes back to what is called no-fault divorce. Back in the 50s, the state of Oklahoma was the first state in the United States to approve no-fault divorce. Years later, 1969, Governor Ronald Reagan went ahead and signed legislation making no-fault divorce in official in California. After his political career was over, he looked back on that and said it was one of his biggest political blunders he had ever made. Time went on and the no-fault divorce revolution swept through the United States, state after state, until 2010 with the state of New York being the final state to approve of no-fault divorce. And what exactly does that mean before no-fault divorce? Spouses came to before the judge and had to present evidence, convincing evidence, where enough where the judge would grant them divorce. So the effort, the, the weight was on the spouse to prove, to prove something, you know, that uh, they, were, they needed a divorce. Well, now, because of no-fault divorce, spouses are not burdened with the need to go out and gather all kinds of evidence to present against their husband or their wife for divorce. Now, the reasons for divorce are like some of these, incompatibility, irreconcilable differences, irremediable breakdown of the marriage. As a result of these no-fault divorce laws, the, the, uh, the rates of divorce has just gone through the roof uh, over the last many decades. According to the National Marriage and Divorce Rate Trend Study, 53% of marriages end in divorce. That was as of 2011. When you break down numbers into first, second, and third marriages, the stats are just absolutely miserable. 45 to 50 percent of first-time marriages end in divorce. 60 to 67 percent of second marriages end in divorce. 70 to 73 percent of third marriages end in divorce. And do the math if somebody's married four, five, six, or more times. Now, what is the average length of the, of the average marriage in America today, 11 years. If you're married 12, <laughs> you stand a good chance at breaking the divorce cycle. If you're married 25, you are an American idol to all the young people um, out there just entering into marriage. Now, what are some of the reasons people give for divorcing? Now, often there's a combination of reasons, more than one when they divorce, but 55% say because their husband or their wife cheated on them. And 25% say to some type of physical or mental or emotional abuse is the reason for divorce. And what about the children? 45% of all children, by the time they're 18 years old or basically a senior in high school, 45% will be the children of parents who have divorced. And when all the no-fault divorce laws came through between 
1972 and 2003, one million brand new children every year became victims of divorce. And from 2003 on, the numbers were a little bit below a million, but still mounting in the hundreds of thousands every single year. Now, when it comes to husbands and wives, they give two thumbs up, 80% for the, for the men, 50% for the women that say, hey, divorce is good. But uh, people who study this with regards to children, they say give two thumbs down. According to Professor William Spoon from Santa Clara University, he says, by almost every measure, children in divorced families fared worse. Emotional problems, early sexual experimenting, dropping out of school, delinquency, teen pregnancy, drug use, and hear this, even 15 years after their parents have divorced, children are sometimes still suffering with these things. So when we talk about children of divorce, we're not just talking about five, six, seven-year-olds or teenagers. Sometimes we're talking about 20-year-olds, 30-year-olds, 40, 50-year-olds that are still suffering under the weight of their parents divorcing. Marriages and families, as you can see, are in crisis, not only in America, but around the world. Now, when we get married, I've been married for 12 years now. When I got married, I, had, I wasn't thinking about divorce at all on my wedding day. My wedding day, I was focused on making it a beautiful ceremony, filling the sanctuary in the room with lots and lots of people and having a, a wonderful honeymoon and beginning my dream of a wonderful marriage. And you know what? Most people are like that. They're not thinking about divorce and annulments and all these crazy things on the day they get married. They're thinking a, a dream, the marriage utopia, building a wonderful family and staying together for the rest of their life. But then all of a sudden, cracks begin to form. And all of a sudden, they begin to drift apart. All of a sudden, their hearts begin to harden. And pretty soon, that dream of a marriage turns into a nightmare of divorce. And we talk about the nightmare of divorce. It was God who created us male and female. He's the author of us as creation. He, he made you and me. And when God made you and me, he also brought male and female together in the first uh, marriage. But not only did God bring us together in marriage, but also God was the one who established the first official divorce law. The Bible says this, whoever divorces his wife, let him give her a certificate of divorce. This was God's first divorce law. God looked down on humankind over the millennium, over several thousand years after he created them, coming together as husband and wife in marriage. And, and, and seeing them to come together in a dream, but then drift apart, their hearts hardened. And God saw that he needed to come down in the midst of the marriages taking place in the world and do something. And God created the first divorce law because of the hardness of a human's heart. Now, this was the first official legal divorce law. At the time that God did this, ancient Egypt was in play. And their marriage and divorce laws, well, they didn't really have any. It was all real informal and just between individuals. So when a, an Egyptian man wanted to divorce his Egyptian wife, it was more of a verbal thing. And they just worked their differences out together. And no signing of agreements or contracts or anything like that. And they parted. Well, God instituted this official divorce law by the signing of this certificate. And one of the things that that did, it is slowed down the, the process of divorce. So people had a chance to jump through a lot of hoops when it came to the legal framework. And jumping through these hoops provided them opportunity to slow the process down, to think about if this is really what they wanted to do. And we speak about the reason why God wanted to establish this allowance for divorce. We keep in mind that this was the God who said, I hate divorce. So we have on one hand, God saying, I hate divorce. And then on the other hand, God making this allowance for divorce. And ultimately, why did God do that? Because of the hardness of the heart. The scripture says, because of your hardness of heart. 